I welcome you to our second lesson of module two, where we are going to really be looking at the significance of the symmetrical components in a protection system, as well as to do examples that will make us be able to work out how to do these quantities. In the previous lesson, we summarized that for your balanced three-phase system, you are only going to have a positive phase sequence. So that is if you do not even have an earth into that system. That's why it just becomes your positive phase sequence. If you did have an earth into it, then it would result into your positive and your zero phase sequence. Then in a three-wire system with no earth fault but supplying an unbalanced load, so if you don't have an earth fault, but you're supplying an unbalanced load, you're going to have a positive and a negative phase sequence. Then if you have got that three phase system that is unbalanced and you've got an earth star point into it, then you are going to have all three of them present, your positive, your negative and your zero phase sequence. So Our first example that we have, we are given three sets of voltages VA, VB and VC and we are asked to calculate our positive, negative and zero phase components. So the first one we do, we do VA naught where we know it's equal to a third of VA plus VB plus VC. I substitute everything in, I get an answer and then I know that answer is exactly the same as my VB naught, VC naught and I can draw those in. I then go and I do my VA1. Now from the previous slide, I know that my VA1 is equal to a third of EA plus alpha EB plus alpha squared EC. Then I go and substitute all of those in. And I know that when I get to my alpha EB, I must take my VB um, degrees and Add 120 to them, and when I get my alpha squared EC, I must take my 240 degrees and add on to the. Then I would be able to get an answer for myself, which I then know that my VB1 is alpha squared VA1 and my VC1 is alpha VC1, knowing my positive phase sequence, how it looks like. I then go on to my VA2. Then for my VA2, I know it's going to be a third of my EA plus alpha squared EB plus alpha EC. And I go and be able to work it out knowing that for my alpha squared, I must add 240 degrees. And for my alpha, I must add 120 degrees. I then know that my VB2 and my VC2, what they are, knowing my negative phase sequence. I then go and be able to put in those figures and draw that phaser diagram out. It's important here that you remember what my VA1 and my VA2 are. If you do not, it means that you need to go back and be able to work it out if you cannot remember. And how do you do that working out? you have to go and simply put in your EA plus EB plus EC where you have written them all in terms of VA, okay? Be it either VA0, VA1, and VA2. Then we know that for my VA1, we take my EB and my EC and we multiply them by alpha and by alpha squared. Then we know that for my VA2, we take it and we multiply by alpha squared and alpha. In other words, EB by alpha squared and EC by alpha. So that is how you actually do it. Then we go on to example two. So in this example, you are given, again, three sets of voltages, my VA, VB, and my VC, and we ask to find our symmetrical components. So again, the first thing that you do is VA naught which is equal to a third of VA plus VB plus VC. You find that answer, you know it's going to be equal to VB naught and VC naught, which you can then also draw the phaser for it. Then we go and work out our VA1, which we know is going to be a third into VA plus alpha VB plus alpha squared VC. 
we go and work that out and while we have the answer we must remember that vb1 is going to be alpha squared va1 and vc1 is going to be alpha va1 you can if you forgot just draw your positive phaser and you will remember that your b is at the bottom that's why it's at alpha squared and your c is at the top that's why it's at alpha you then go into the last part, which is VA2. Again, it's a third into VA plus alpha squared VB plus alpha VC. And you find your answer. You then go and work out your VB2, which is at alpha VA2, and your VC2, which is at alpha squared VA2. You find those and you go and draw your system. Then we've got a third one. Now, this time around, they give us V0, V1, and V2. So they give us your zero, your positive, and your negative phase sequences. And they say we must now find the phase sequence components. In other words, I'm looking for my VA, VB, and VC. So I know that my VA is going to be my VO, V1, plus V2. And I can be able to just go and write all of those out. Once I've found that, then I know that my VB is actually going to be my VO plus alpha squared V1. Because remember, on your positive phase sequence, your B is at the bottom at 240 degrees. Plus my VA2, which is at my 120 degrees, if I go to my negative phase sequence that's where my b is at then i'm able to get my answer accordingly then i go to work out my c phase sequence and again on my c phase sequence i know it's going to be my v naught as it is and then i know my positive phase sequence my c is sitting at 120 and at my negative phase sequence my c is sitting at 240 degrees i go and be able to give that answer at the bottom, you can see that they've drawn your VA, your VB, and your VC. And they did not leave it there, but they also went to draw in your VA1, VA2, VA0, and so on the B and your C phases. Then we have example four, and in this example, you've got a three-phase, four-wire symmetrical supply with a phase sequence of ABC. It supplies a load which impedances are unequally distributed between your three phases. An analysis of the currents flowing in the direction of the loads in the line A shows that your positive phase sequence current is 14.5 at minus 45 degrees and the negative phase sequence current is 22.5 at 105 so remember the one was i1 the other one is i2 and then it says the current flowing back to your neutral is 27.3 now remember there was a slide where i showed you that your i naught where you have a neutral becomes your i n multiplied by a third so that's exactly what you have here you've got an i a naught which is going to be my i n over three so therefore i take the 27.3 at 64 degrees they gave me i divide that by three and i can get what my i a naught is once I have that, because now I've got my IA naught, and what did they give me? They gave me IA1, which is my positive, and they gave me my negative, which is IA2. So I can be able to work out what my IA is because I just add all three of them up together. And then for my IB, I know that is IB naught plus IB1 plus IB2, which can simply be written as IA naught plus, if I go to my positive phase sequence, I know that B is at 240 degrees, so it becomes alpha squared IA1. And then if I go to my negative phase sequence, I know that B is at 120 degrees, so it's alpha IA2. I then put in all of those, remembering to add in my relevant 120 and 240 degrees where they are supposed to be added. 
I do the same for my IC by writing it in a terms of IA0, IA1, and IA2. Then I've got my example 5. And then in my example 5, you can see that I've got a three-phase, four-wire system again with a star-connected load. The symmetrical components of the currents in line A, okay, that's your phase A, are the following, and they give it to me. So I've got my positive, my negative, and my zero-phase sequence given. The other one where I was in example 4, I didn't have my zero-phase sequence. I was given my neutral, so I had to go work out my zero-phase sequence. Then they give me the voltage drop across the phases of the load are as follows. They give me VAN, VPN, and VCN. Remember, it's a star connection, so it's your phase voltage boost. So for the first part of it, they say we must use the positive phase sequence and calculate your impedance of the load. Okay, so for me to do that, I must go and find what my IA1, my IB1, and IC1 by positive phase sequence, all they're saying is exactly in the manner that we have been able to practice it out now. So they come in that manner. So therefore, my IAN is simply my IA1 plus IA2 plus IA0. And my IB is going to be IB0, IB1, IB2, which I know can be written as alpha squared IA1 and alpha IA2, while my IA0 remains the same. I then go and work that out, and I can go to my ICN of which by now also know the formula being IA0 plus alpha IA1 plus alpha squared IA2. I apologize for the yawning. Then we go to my ZA, which is my impedance across my A phase, which is simply my VAN divided by my IAN. Will be the same for my ZB and my ZC. Then I go to the second part where I was asked to work out what the complex power of the scenario is going to be. So I know my SAN is going to be my VAN IAN. That star, remember, means that I take the conjugate of my current. So it's not exactly the angle that my current has been in but it is that angle at my 180 degrees apart from it. So for my first one, I've got the VAN, which is 172 at the 78. I multiply by the INN magnitude that I got, but then I must remember now my angle changes, so it becomes at minus 30.89. Then for my SBN, I know it's my VBN and IBN, so I've got my 196 at 48 that I've been given. Then for my current, it's what I was able to work out, which was the 23.175. But now it is at minus 145.07 because it's on the other side. Then for my SCN, I go again and I take my VCN as I've been given. And then I multiply by the current that I'm able to work out, but I put at the negative of that phase that I had before. So if I were to add all of them together, then that is what my answer would be at the end of the day. This is again summarizing what we have learned, that my V note is a third into EA plus EB plus EC, my V1, a third into EA plus alpha EB plus alpha EC, and my V2 is a third into alpha into EA, alpha squared EB, and alpha EC. Therefore, my currents will take exactly the same formulas as my voltages, you just represent them with the current. Then my impedance will always be my voltage divided by my current. So this is the exercises that were given in your module 2 pack. And I have gone and worked out for you for that in the first threes. So here I have gone and worked out for you what's your IA, 
your IB and your IC using the formulas that we are very familiar with now. And then for my QA, it simply becomes VA, IA, sine VA angle multiplied by my current angle, okay? And then if I go to my B phase, it's exactly the same, VB, IB, sine my VB can angle might subtract my current angle in V. And then I do the same thing for my C phase. On my question two, I also go and I calculate what my IA is. I simply know it's IA not IA1, IA2. IB, I already changed the IB not IB1, IB2 into my A phases, okay? And then for my IC, I do the So in this question, I am given my VA, VB, VC. And for all three phases, I must find my zero positive and negative phase sequence. So I start with the A phase by putting VA note. I know that it's going to be a third of VA plus VB plus VC, which will also be the same as a VB note and a VC note. Then I go into my VA1, which is a third into VA plus alpha, VB plus alpha squared VC. And from there, I can work out my VB1 and my VC1. Then I go into my VA2, which is a third into VA plus alpha squared VB plus alpha VC, which will also give me my VB2 and VBC formula. And I go and put those values. Then this is the last three. Before you go on to your tutorial two, please do these three guys. And then after you've been able to do them by yourselves, you can go on to tutorial two. Good luck and thank you for joining us on our module two.